Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I am JT, and I'm here with the natural, Joseph Worthington. What's up, guys? King of the natties. Believe it. But we're going to talk about bulking for BJJ. Yeah, now, talk this- to a natty guy about bulking. <laughs> it's a hard thing, right? And so many people out there are, are training a lot of jiu-jitsu and therefore really struggling to put on weight. It's actually a big request from... Uh, Specifically guys, lighter weight guys, they may be trying to go up a category or, you know. Put on some muscle. Everyone wants to look, you know, kind of jacked. But it's like, it's actually far harder than people think. It's simpler than people think, but to actually go through the process is hard. Yeah. Um, So tell me, why why would someone want to put on weight? Well, I mean, usually people, when they say they want to put on weight, they're saying, I want to put on muscle. No one's like, hey, can I just get fat? Can you just, if I could just chuck on 10 kilos of gut that'd be great no 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 one's saying that but here's the thing which we probably don't appreciate because we get sold so much nonsense on the internet when you do you have to go into a calorie surplus to put on muscle which means you might put on a little bit of fat and that's that's perfectly acceptable but because of all the like anti-carb you know like uh, keto like all this stuff that's out there in the world people like oh they're scared of carbohydrates when people don't understand that actually that will really help you um, build muscle over time. We're going to kind of break that down. But um, I think the main reason other than aesthetics, people trying to get like ziz, you know, ziz bro. Um, that's all it is. One pin a week. It's one pin. One pin? <laughs> is that his, yeah, right, his no. dosage? <laughs> Just dialed it back to one pin. Um, if you're not someone who wants to take steroids, which is the vast majority of everybody. But the vast majority of everybody. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a conversation saying, you know what? Think about going on a cycle. You know, like who has those conversations? I mean I've had that I have had that chat a couple of times, but it's a dirty secret. We live in the gym world. People just would do it but they don't want to talk about it. Oh of course, yeah. of course. And it's probably only older men it's like dude in his mid to late thirties being like Man, Joe Rogan's on that TRT, isn't he? Yeah. He looks fucking stacked. I could hit some TRT. You know, like it doesn't, it's, it, it's, it's like destigmatized steroids. Yeah. It's like controlled steroids. Oh, I can, I'm not cheating or anything. I just want to look better. Whatever. We're going to talk about how you can build muscle. And specifically, we talk about bulking, which requires <laughs> eating a lot more, lifting a fair bit, and also resting a lot more. But let's break it down. Let's talk about the lifting portion. Just on that, I think the other thing for, for Jits players is, yeah, like you said, going up a weight division. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you're sitting here, you always kind of feel like you're in between divisions and you want to just firmly put yourself in the middle of the category above. Yeah. So it's like, well, the best thing to do is just try and put on a few kilograms of mass Yeah. and you're going to be there. Yeah. And okay. you want to feel stronger. No one likes to feel weak. It doesn't matter what category you're in. You want to feel like hench. Yeah. You want to feel competitive. You don't want strength to be a weakness. Mm. Um, So how can we do this? To build muscle, there's a few things you need to do with your lifting. Now, you can take the exercises out of Most part of those, you need to be doing some strength training. You need to be doing some lifting. Yeah, if you're not doing it, you can maybe put on some weight, but you want to be putting on some, like that's how you're going to be building muscle. Yeah, and there's a compounding effect here because when you break muscles down, this actually elevates your metabolism, which increases hunger and which makes you then ingest more calories and then the the growth cycle continues. But uh, when we were doing the prelude chat to this, we were talking about uh, two, two key things which are really good for stimulating muscle growth. One is muscle damage and two is time under tension which is actually a big thing that uh, is, is obvious. It's very obvious in the bodybuilding world, the strength realm, but jujitsu people don't really talk about it at all. So we get into that a little bit more. Um, I had actually listened to Luke Tullock talk a little bit about this. He had his own ideas about, he, he had changed his mind over time as to what he thought was most important for building muscle. And for those of you out there, if you're not across Luke Tullock, he's an awesome strength coach, bodybuilding coach, and just a specimen of a human. Also major uh, studied neuroscience. Very intelligent. Yeah, like one, of, shit. one of the smartest guys. And, and he had said that actually... For himself, even though he had craved a lot of muscle damage at the start when he was like, yo, this is what breaks muscle fibers and then we build them back up, it results in a lot of soreness. So a way that you can do that is by doing uh, 
eccentric focus training, like slow eccentrics. So, for example, if you're doing a squat, instead of just doing your normal up and down at a second or two, going down and up, you would actually slow down the eccentric portion. Same thing with a chin-up. Go really slow on the way down. Come up as fast as you can, but really slow on the way down because you actually have just a little bit more strength eccentrically, like you can produce a little bit more force, a safety mechanism, but that's where you get sore. Like when you do eccentrics, it kills you. Yeah. I remember just being like a teenager and I learned about this thing when you couldn't curl anymore, your partner would lift it up for you and you just yeah. fight it on the way down and then do it again and just do it again until you're out. Quintessential 16-year-old training session. Oh, my God. 15 sets of bicep curls. And then you couldn't even pick up the soap. You try and clean your hands. And you're, uh, yeah. Uh, but, oh, my God, what that does for, for muscle growth. It doesn't necessarily make you stronger doing big eccentric training, but it does create muscle damage, which then causes protein synthesis to get your body bulking. Yeah, and actually I think something that, that Luke Tullock has mentioned, uh, um, another point he's mentioned as well, which is that for a lot of people they just – like whether you're doing eccentrics or, and here's the thing, like whichever kind of training you're doing, whatever kind of strength work, whether it's barbell, body weight, whatever. But he's like, if you're trying to grow muscle, you've actually got to, like the sets have to be hard. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't go that hard each set. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like if you're training sub-maximally, you will still be getting stronger. You will still be eliciting some muscle growth gains and, and all of the other great things that come with it. But if your goal is to gain mass, you should be looking to, to kind of go within near failure on every set. Near failure is the tip, right? Yeah. I remember when I first started, it was all about failure. Yeah. Like you had to just do drop sets, like leg extension machine, just as many reps as you could, drop a plate. Destroy just your legs. So you're just quivering. Those piano walk. sets. Piano sets. Yeah. And the, the thing about this is they've kind of realized over time is, you know, 20, 20, 25 years ago, they're like, uh, yeah, you get so sore, you can't train for a week yeah that's not good for building like and it's definitely not good for jujitsu no, right because if you can't walk you can't guard shoot or anything else so it's one of those things that you have to be able to do repeated efforts and so the 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 reviewed approach to working to failure or near failure is you want to just have left yourself one rep or two reps in the tank that will be enough stimulus to um to kind of, uh, yeah, get the muscles to grow, basically. Um, in terms of that, like, I guess just to talk briefly on, like, how much strength training you need to be doing. Yeah. My opinion, two workouts a week is enough for you to get yeah. muscle gains. I, I agree with that. Three is great. I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm always leaning on the side of more. Why do I say that? Because actually, um, what we don't probably appreciate about jiu-jitsu uh, it, in terms of the context of this conversation, it will steal your gains. Uh, so just recently, well, actually this morning, talking with Julian, um, we haven't got him mic'd up, we should. He, he woke up this morning. He wouldn't say like, anything anyway. No, nah, he, uh, he, he just smiled. Yeah. Um, he put on weight. He's been trying to put on weight for ages. Right. And uh, he Under put your on, tutelage. Well, I don't know about that, as, but um, he put on a kilo. And he was like, wow, I, I was surprised, you know? And I was like, oh, have you reduced how much jujitsu you've been doing? He's like, yeah, I haven't been training as much. And I was like, boom, there it is. There's two, there's two elements to this, guys. One, because when you train jujitsu, it does break down your body and you burn a, a crap ton of energy, uh, way more than most people estimate when they train jujitsu. That said, also, it suppresses your hunger. So the, the other key component of this, apart from lifting, is the eating. So if you're doing an activity four or five times a week that is suppressing your hunger, then that's, that really flies in the face of trying to build muscle. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Joe. I think two is good, but even if your, your real focus is to build muscle, I would go so far as to swap a jiu-jitsu session for a lifting session. Right, that's, yeah. Just in this context of putting on muscle, and that, that's your priority. Yeah, and that goes to that definitely goes to the next part, doesn't it? Which is like calories yes. and energy balance. Yeah, but bef just before we go there, I want to say time under tension. So this is maybe something you've never done before, but for example, instead of doing say ten or fifteen squats, do one squat that lasts ten seconds on the way down and ten seconds on the way up. It will absolutely leave you shuddering like oh like it, what it does to your nervous system in terms of control and muscle recruitment is really full on 
this can also be done with higher rep, like higher volume training. So for example, um, uh, Thor, Liam Hemsworth, he does super high volume training, super low weight, just obviously a bunch of steroids as well, but whatever. Um, he, he does that because one, lifting lighter weights. Did you less, read this in Men's Health? No, I didn't. It was actually an interview with his trainer. Well, his trainer wasn't <laughs> like, yeah, look, I think Liam's stacked oh, with tweaked question it. question those celebrity trainers. No, look, no, I met him one time. I, I, I think he's a legit trainer. Right. But then also they got Ross Edgley in, for those of you out there who are not. Oh, aware. he's the, the Brit fucking super dude. Yeah, Superman, who I would say is also on a gang of supplements. Yeah. He, you know, it's very hard to run a marathon with a 90 kilo log on your shoulders and then swim the English Channel. Right, yeah. He's doing untested events. He's so My guy. He's so stacked. I mean, he might do the ADCC. <laughs> <laughs> he should. A special guest yeah. super fight. <laughs> um, Thor versus Ross Edgley. No. So anyway, long story short, doing higher volume sets means you spend more time under tension. Yeah. And so that can be done through more reps or slower reps. Yeah. This causes greater muscle recruitment and that tension, the tension in the muscle, pulls more muscle fibers in. Greater stimulation, greater growth. So I just want to say it. I remember um, referencing Luke Tulloch again. He said the, uh, you know, based on the science, looking at uh, the amount of working sets mm -hmm. needed per week for muscle gain was between 10 and 20. Right. And uh, I like that as a guide. And I, and I think if you look at any of our programs, shameless plug, <laughs> you're, generally hitting, you're generally hitting 10 sets. Yeah. Right. And if you, for, for, you know, for folks listening, it's like, if we're talking about like the hamstrings and the glutes and the muscles of the lower back, well, if you do five sets of deadlifts and then you do three sets of kettlebell swings and then three sets of single leg glute bridges, yep. you've just completed like 11 working sets. Tick the box. Right? So yeah, so that's enough, you know? And so the way the programs tend to break down, it's like anterior hip, quads, push pattern, pull pattern. It's like, yep. it's all there. So you, your training, do, you don't have to go super complex. Keep that shit simple, but master these other parts. Yeah, definitely. It's just something to consider. If you're someone who struggles, because yeah. that's the thing, we're probably we're reaching out to the, the slimmer folks who want to build muscle and they're like, it, it, it is challenging. It's way harder than I think people imagine. Yeah, but if, if that's right. And, but it's easy to go, oh, fuck, I need, I need to get on a, like a specific program. It's like, nah, you just need to do the other shit. Yeah. Make sure the sets are hard and then let's eat. Yeah. Let's eat. Now, I can't remember who told me this, but I, I've said it because it just resonated. Probably me. Yeah. Maybe it was Joe. And maybe it was before I knew Joe. It was just that it spoke to the fat child in me, which was like, to be a bigger person, you have to eat like a bigger person. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm on board with that. You know, you, you know, whatever your body weight might be, if you want to put on five kilos of muscle, which is very hard to do, it takes time. You have to consistently eat in a surplus. Now, the mistake I used to make was I would eat like two kilos of steak. I just like, yeah, I'm just going to eat a whole cow here. When actually digestively, you can only absorb a, a certain percentage of that. And the rest of that is just going in the toilet. That's an expensive trip to the, to the bathroom. You know, same thing. Like people just smash. I used to be like, I'll put three scoops of protein powder in my protein shake. It's kind of hack the system. It's kind of pointless. You actually, even though it, it, it's just the nature of things, it's a little bit harder, it's far better for you to be able to space your protein out over the day because you can only absorb, depending on your digestion, and there's debate about this, anywhere from 10 to 30 grams at max at any one time. If you've got a really healthy liver and really good digestive enzymes, liver king uh, enzymes, um, you can absorb a lot of protein, but some people can't. Just a fucking thing here. If you are trying to bulk and you are also fasting, oh fuck off! You need to get rid of that shit right away. I fasting don't, has no place. They don't exist. They for, don't even for any, Yeah, it's like, oh, I want to do the fasting thing for my health, but I also want to get bigger. It's like, no, no, no. Just do one fucking thing now. You can do the other thing down the track if you really want to, but it doesn't work because yeah, you got to space the delivery of the calories and the nutrients out. Mm. And I mean, that's the whole idea of fasting is that it, it stops you eating as much. It, it, so it restricts your calories. Two very different things. So like one is des designed to put you into a deficit and there's many other associated benefits for you not taking in food at a time. Sure. And some people might say eating surplus calories for a big period of time is not healthy. Maybe, but you're not doing it forever. You're just doing it for a period of time to achieve an outcome. And that's fine. That, that's totally good. 
peaks and troughs. Can I just paint a picture on that whole calorie thing Please. for folks? Um, so for the, you know, if you're not initiated on this, so calories is just a simple measurement of energy. So all foods have some amount of calories in them, right? It's a very simple measurement. Uh, it's not taking into account nutrients or any of that shit. It's just like how much energy is in this piece of food. Now, talking about energy balance, you have an amount of calories or energy that you need to consume to maintain your bodily functions. Um, you then have an amount that you also need to add on top to support your activity, mm -hmm. right? And so if you're someone who's just trying to perform and support your activity, then you're eating what we call a maintenance level. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going to eat a deficit. You're going to eat underneath that. And that means your output is going to be exceeding the amount of energy you're consuming. If you're trying to gain weight, you need to be in a surplus. Now, it's very simple mathematics. Surplus means you need to be eating more than it takes for you to uh, have sustain the output Live of your can, life, right? It's not fucking easy because your all of your physiology is geared towards just getting enough. Just enough. Right? Like unless you're eating ice cream or some shit like that that kind of ha hacks your body's mechanisms. It, you, it's very fucking hard. And I think that the people listening to this will be like, people who have tried bulking will be like, man, it's so fucking hard. People listening will be like, fuck yeah, this sounds fun. It's not fun at all. No. Like eating a lot is, I would say it's, it's easier to eat less. It's easier to lose weight than it is to gain weight from that point of view. Yes, because actually eating is an enjoyable thing, right? Eat to win. I'm the father of the eat to win nation. Um, it, when you eat for enjoyment, it's great. But when you know when you get full, and I've, I've, had, I've, I've been doing this for the last two, three months, which is you get full and then you're like, how much further can I? How many reps of fried chicken do I have left in the tank? <laughs> like, and you know, all just keep the hash browns coming. It's just, I just get it. There's a potato shortage. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there is now. Fuck the farmers! <laughs> don't eat the potatoes, bro. Um, dude, I'm the reason why there's a potato shortage. <laughs> but essentially, you have to eat to be uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's kind you of got to force feed. Yeah, you got to eat more than you've, and it makes you feel a bit nauseous. Oh, it's gross. It's kind of gross, right? And, it, and in and, some ways, it's and it's absolutely not a healthy choice to make for a prolonged period of time. No, which is why strong men, bodybuilders, like yeah. they face a lot of negative health consequences they as do. a result of a lifetime of this, right? And they typically live shorter lives. It's like big dogs. Like I was shocked when I heard that Great Danes they only live like six or seven years wow they get way more circulation problems way more organ problems it's just not sustainable to be that big yeah and we see it a lot in the kind of in the world of 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 people who try to put on heaps of mass but we're not saying that you have to be one of those people but you are going to have to get uncomfortable when you eat but i'm going to give you two of jt's bulking hacks <laughs> so um, before Christmas, uh, up, Jules. early December, this <laughs> young Julian, I was 92 kilos and I knew I wasn't going to do much jujitsu over Christmas. And I was like, I wonder how strong I can get and how big I can get. Cause typically people blow out over Christmas. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to eat protein. I'm just going to eat. Like if there's prawns, steak, like this is Australia. This is the kind of thing that we do. We have lots of produce here. Um, mate, I'm just going to do it. Any opportunity I can, I'm just going to eat protein at every meal and i put on eight kilos in eight weeks just from eating protein protein i mean i was eating everything you're else eating as everything well, right but You've i gone was hard on the protein excessive calories in protein right. um because i didn't want to be too fat because i'm still a bit vain yeah also i was taking creatine <laughs> so there's a bit of water retention there as well and i was being quite conservative with my uh, creatine consumption because i've never been a big creatine believer i was only taking about two grams a day and then I read a study that showed that anywhere from five to 10 grams of creatine a day is very beneficial for anyone like over 90 kilos. It was like the more body weight you have, more creatine you should get in. So for those of you who have no experience with creatine, it's just basically like a super processed form of carbohydrate that allows you to get more reps. So it helps. It's a form of carbohydrate? Yeah. Okay. Like it helps re-up your um, ATP stores. Yeah. So let's say I say, Joe. I reckon I could do more push-ups than you. And Joe's like, Phew. I'm an athlete, dog. You're a meathead. Let's do it. Whoever JT goes to the toilet, chops up a big fat line of creatine. <laughs> I'm pumping two grams right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Fuck yeah. Let's go. Just blood. <laughs> so the thing is when... Hey, girls. Whatever. I got a bag of creatine right here. <laughs> Y'all want to party? <laughs> 
Y'all want a deadlift? Max set, what you got? <laughs> um, so if you were to do your maximum repetitions, that's very much dictated by obviously your strength endurance, but the amount of ATP you have in the muscles. What creatine does is it gives you just a little bit extra so you can get a couple more reps. It's not like, oh, it makes you stronger, but it just gives you that little bit of extra energy. That top end. Yeah, when you so if you're doing a set where you could only do three reps, maybe it would give you an extra rep. Or if you're doing a set of 10, you might get 12 or 15. But cumulatively, if you keep doing this over more and more workouts, you're getting way more volume. Greater work. And so you ultimately will build more muscle over time. But it does make your body retain water. That's where people go, ah, I'm not looking so lean. And I'm definitely not looking so lean. So I was basically eating steak every day and I was taking 10 grams of creatine every day. And right. I, yeah, I've henched up. And so yeah, he's... I can can attest. Can attest. If you can't see, I keep <laughs> keep drawing in so you can't see my belly. Um, the other thing, there's two things here. Watching television while you're eating blocks your full mechanism. We had talked about this. So that's very unhealthy if you're trying to lose weight. Do not eat in front of the television. But if you're trying to maximize how much food you can eat, watch a, watch watch us on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and because have a meal. It actually it actually blocks your ability to know when you're full. So people tend to overeat if they eat in front of the television. Yeah. That's a little bulking hack. Also, work out when your full mechanism kicks in. I know for me, I've only got about 15 minutes. So I'm just like, oh, no, 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 just disgusting uh, pig of a human just eating as fast as I can because I'm trying to get maximum calories in um, in the time. Now, I'm not saying don't chew, definitely chew, um, because that can lead to indigestion. But what I do is I – and uh, Joey's <laughs> – exposed my methods i pre-cut everything up to minimize the process of the chewing so i can i mean i'm halfway through my brekkie and you're still fucking chopping up (laughs) preparation is everything (laughs) joe i don't care what you say so look the eating portion is difficult and we've discussed this before it is difficult to get all the calories in you need eating clean yeah so that means eating like not too many saturated fats not too many processed carbs Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like if you're eating like whole grains, like, you know, whatever, like Post salmon, chicken. steak, chicken, and brown rice, and, you know, vegetables, it's very hard to eat in a calorie surplus yeah. with those foods. But you get a quarter pounder in that bad boy. Oh, you go to McDonald's, Four. maybe Hungry Jacks. Yeah, a couple of them, family pack. Big thing of breakfast cereal, tub of ice cream. Tub of ice cream. Uh, yeah, so I would say like for me, it's I've always, like I don't have a big appetite. I'm not I'm not a big eater, so I need to get a bit of the dirty stuff in order to, to get the bulk on. Um, I, what I, the way I like to do it is like still eat, clean like good food for three meals but then i'll supplement little like snacks and stuff that are maybe suboptimal food choices yeah like rice bubbles cocoa pops sure you know all that it's, kind of shit it's like it's processed stuff that we would never usually advocate for this is something that that's right if you're trying to get healthy you don't fuck with this don't do that but we're not actually talking about that we're talking about trying to get in maximum amount of calories that will enable you to be in a surplus because for most people day to day it's hard if, you, if you're at work and you've, you know, like maybe you work at a cafe or a restaurant, you run off your feet, you barely get a break, like how are you going to get your food in? Yeah, and you're training jits three times a week and going to the gym a couple of times. Yeah, it's a, it's a hustle. So being organized about your food is super key. I'm very fortunate. I have a, a Polish partner who cooks for an army. So there's always food in the fridge. It's never a problem. But also I always carry protein bars with me and I always bring extra snacks. Because I just know that that's, that's what I'm going to need. And if you haven't done this before, you know, it's kind of famous in the bodybuilding wor- world is the idea of meal prepping. Is like, I don't know, because I know, Joe, you love to cook, but usually our house on a Sunday, three or four dishes will get cooked. Like a soup, a bloody oh, wow. baked veggies, you know, roast up a whole gang of drumsticks, maybe a bolognese, like there'll be a bunch of dishes So there. that JT can eat on Monday. But yeah, you start again on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> One day's worth of food. <laughs> JT, that was for the whole family. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Unlucky mum, you're on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, you like to cook. so I um, like to cook. I'm, do you ever I, do the cook up? I go through periods of the cook up. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like to enter the week without having something made. Something in the fridge. But yeah, these days, like sometimes when I'm super busy, I might not get to it. Sure. Uh, but I will always have a plan. Like even if I'm going home on a Monday night and I'm like, fuck, I don't have any dinner prepared. I'm already thinking about, all right, what carb am I making tonight? I'll chuck some rice in the pressure cooker. Yeah, Matt, I got some fucking pasture beef sausages. Yeah. You know, like it's coming together. Yeah. 
but yeah, absolutely. Like if I think back to me sort of, um, before I had a family and stuff, I wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, and the P pe- and the people that are successful with this are those that prep. Yeah, and if you look at your friends who are into bodybuilding, they're usually prepping. Yeah, so like, if you're trying to gain some weight, like prep, like be about it, go, go do your grocery shopping on the weekend and cook some shit so that you can start the week strong. That said, I'm going to put this out there. If you're someone who hates cooking, just saying, there is a lot of really good pre-organized food now. There is. Like way better than it used to be. Yeah. Like whether you like- You kind of choose your food, macros. Asian, yeah. Like My Muscle Chef, like it, it will even tell you how much protein, carbohydrate and everything else is going on there. Yeah. And so that's so helpful, That it, which means, look, really simple. I went into the servo the other day. And a young tradie guy ahead of me, I got some petrol. I also bought a liter of milk. I'm back on the milk, people. Milk's a great way to get calories Mate, in. If you, want to, if you want to get fat, phew, smash. cream milk. Man, milk has a lot of sugar in it. A lot of people don't realize. That's the lactose. But anyway, so I had a liter of milk. Um, people might have thought I was buying it for my young family. They didn't realize I was about to walk outside and neck the whole thing in five seconds. Young tradie dude in front of me bought two massive things of Powerade. He had two chocolate bars My God. and a pie and then a chocolate, like, big M. Mm, chalky milk. Chalky milk, right? And I was looking. He was a skinny. purple belt? He was a skinny, probably. He was a skinny dude. You know, he was skinny. I was looking at him like, oh, that seems like, I was looking at, like, cool, respect, but this guy isn't trying to get bigger. He's just trying to get nutrients into. Just trying to get fuel. Just get fuel because he's going to be working all day, you know, on the job site type thing. And I was like, dang. To me, I was trying to calculate all the calories he was ingesting. Yeah. This guy doesn't care about nutrition. He's like, I'm just trying to get whatever I can into me. But that is fucking expensive. Yeah. You, you, it, it, like this yeah, you're is spending what, $30 on junk food. Right? But it, if you buy pre-prepared meals, they usually shake down to about 10 or 12 bucks a thing. You could have three pre-prepared meals. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Which would be quite healthy. So a lot of people are like, oh, I can't afford it. Well maybe you're spending that money somewhere somewhere else so yeah bringing some it it will i was saying this to julian and he was like well give me a pay rise then boss (laughs) i was like you're gonna have to (laughs) he did say those are exact words um you gotta invest like i the amount of money i spent on steak in the last three months is ridiculous well you pay somewhere right yeah like you buy you're buying food so it's like yeah if you want to put on mass you think of it as you're buying muscle yeah (laughs) you you know like yeah literally it's an investment in yourself. Yeah. But okay, so here is the next piece, which is huge. Um, I more recently had not had caffeine, and that was because I actually got food poisoning, but not to worry. Um, so I didn't have caffeine for about three weeks. And yes, yeah, sleep was better, but I have made a big effort to sleep better. That's my whole thing. I'm not getting up as well. I'm not doing 4 a.m.s. I'm making sure I'm in bed around 9. Pussy. Oh, Dave Goggins, I'm sorry, bro. You're not getting up. What time are you getting up now? Uh, five. Wow, moderate. <laughs> no, I'm just going to bed earlier. Yeah. That's all it is. And yes, yeah, sleep. Sleep is so hard to explain, guys. No, it's not. No, no, no. Do no. it more. Yeah, yeah. But I'm <laughs> saying it like to try and there's a there's a whole book on why it's so beneficial, right? But if you're just thinking, how do I grow muscle? Steroids. Sleep equals steroids. Growth hormone, testosterone. When you go to sleep, your body regulates your hormones. You don't sleep well, your hormones don't regulate, which means you just don't grow. Like, you could be out there eating all the best foods and lifting the weights. You're like, yeah, but my sleep shit. Okay, well, they, you, yeah. you're fucking yourself up. So um, we, we've discussed sleep pretty in-depth in other episodes. But it is an essential facet of muscle gain isn't it the biggest strongest humans in the world sleep more than anyone yeah like it's a they're truly disciplined around their sleep that's it and that's the thing we don't really think of it as a discipline we go oh it's just something i have to do yeah like if i could sleep less i would it's like well no actually if you want better quality in everything you do including growing muscle and being stronger the biggest strongest humans in the world they'll sleep nine hours a day or more yeah. Because that's really what you need to heal your body and get things to grow. Um, do you have any tips for people out there who are struggling to sleep, Joe? Uh, yeah. I mean, I got some generic ones that you've, you've all heard, but turn the lights off like early. Dark. Yeah. Like get the house dark, put your lamps on and stuff just so that you don't have like huge amounts of illumination. Um, of, you know, I say avoid the blue light. I, I do often like we were on a call last night. We were. 
five minutes before I went to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will try to limit that as much as possible, right? So, uh, you know, don't be on your computer, don't be on your phone. Eh, fuck, what? watch a bit of TV. Personally, like last night, I opened a book, uh, a fiction book, and just read that for 10 minutes mm-hmm. um, in a low-lit room, and then I was like, mm, ready for bed. Brings you down. Yeah, yeah I, that's my piece. Um, I often, I like the eye mask as well. Okay. Even though I've currently lost them, I don't know where they are. Ah, uh, Leo stolen them. Yeah, they're somewhere in the bedroom. <laughs> I just don't know where. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely for me the reading the reading definitely brings me down a notch. And I like to stretch actually. I find doing a bit of a stretch is almost like a meditation. It helps me get my mind off murdering our dev team or conquering the world, you know, whatever delusions I have in my brain. By stretching, it makes me think about my body and I chill and stretching helps bring my nervous tension down. Mm. So I don't do it for ages. I might only do like five minutes, a bit of roller. But that, that helps me just let the brain chill. Yeah, that's a good one. But um, I think if you if you are really keen and you're intent, you have to look at these three things. Look at your lifting. Are you getting enough reps? Are you getting that exposure to stimulate your muscles to grow? How often are you actually lifting? Two, you've got to be eating surplus calories, and that, that will be hard to do. And the thing we didn't talk about is everyone's – basal metabolic rate so your base rate of energy output even if you don't train is at wherever it's at it's different for everybody that the thing which is hardest is jujitsu burns so many calories and we don't have an accurate way to measure it so definitely always err on the side of trying to eat that bit more um eat till you're uncomfortable and then taking your sleep seriously and if you're doing these three things and you're still struggling to put on muscle um, I believe Gordon Ryan has a special black market DVD that – no, no. Anyway, not to worry. What I'd say is the most important thing you can do is maybe swap one jiu-jitsu session for a lifting session. I know it might sound strange. Less jiu-jitsu will mean you can grow more muscle. And then when you have the muscle you want, you can go back to training. Yeah, It's way easier to maintain it than to attain it. Yeah. That's, this is what I have found. 100%. Cool. If you need help in terms of the training side, get on our Swole program. Ooh, it's yes, got sir. all the shit you need, sets, reps, volume per week to get you hench. All you got to do is add in the sleep and the food and you're golden. Go to bulletproof for bjj.com, state free trial. See you on Swole. Thank you.